The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Many in Jerusalem will accept a Messiah. The Messiah is coming. Not the real Messiah, but um, an imposter is coming. It's going to be right there in Jerusalem. And the world will be bedazzled from Jerusalem. You see, it's almost like a person that needs uh, proof before you can move. And I know how that is. Because walking by faith can be scary. Listen to this, though. We already know in the book of Daniel. How many How many of you guys now, some of you guys know that, right? Some of you guys know that. Some don't. I'm interested in the ones that don't understand that. You just can't see that happening. How can Jerusalem rise to power? How can the mantle of leadership pass from America straight to uh, Jerusalem? How can that be? And it's going to be a false. Listen, it's going to be, we're talking about dark leadership but here's the problem it's not going to look dark and without your father all of you would accept it all of you and all of you would go for it you're going to accept it so let me let me start here because i'm going to open up to the book of daniel i'm going to read something i've read you know time and time again you guys already know this it's only that you're seeing from a specific perspective when it says he's going to go into jerusalem He's going to cause oblation to cease. He's going to set up the abomination of desolation. Uh-oh. He's going to set up the abomination of desolation. Where? Jerusalem. Then it gives us closer narrative. He'll sit in the temple of God, proclaiming himself as God. Isn't that something? That narrative has already been set up. It's in the hearts of people, and people are finally ready to receive. See, no antichrist could have come unless the people could be fooled spiritually. People are fooled spiritually right now. That's how you know the Antichrist is coming. And so was the big war. Now, when they go into Jerusalem, they're going to take it over. They're going to place the abomination that makes it desolate. That's when Jesus said those who uh, live in Judea, they should flee into the mountains and not go back to take anything out of their houses. It's the first time in the Word of God in the New Testament, that the Messiah said, run for your lives, run. Don't ever, hey, don't go back. Don't think about what you own. Abandon everything that you have and run. Mm. So someone is on their way. Someone is going to assume power in Jerusalem. And that someone will be from those who have indignation against the Holy Covenant. And because we know that person is going to occupy Israel for three and a half years, we know that the world is going to be bedazzled. We know that the world is not going to resist this person. Have you read the description of what that's going to look like? My question to you is, how in the world can somebody, anybody, go into Jerusalem with all of you here, right? Because the Bible clearly states that day is not going to come. Thus there come a falling away in that man of perdition be revealed. What day? When you go to be with the Lord collectively. When the dead rise and when you go to be with the Lord. Many people call that the rapture. That day is not coming and unless there come a falling away first. And that man of perdition is revealed. Then that day will come. So that means you're going to know who the man of perdition is. That's why it says that day shall not come. Must there come a falling away first and that man of perdition be revealed. So it, it revealed is going to have to be known of you. You will know who the Antichrist is and know the world is not going to call him or it the Antichrist. No, just like they do now, they're going to call things the solution. Now, first and foremost, I'm going to share something with you guys because I don't want anybody to go the off left field in assumptions. So number one, I love my Lord and Savior. Number two, I am not biased of any of these kingdoms in this world. I'm only thankful for the Lord's placement of me in one of these kingdoms. And yes, they are dark kingdoms, but I'm very thankful for where he put me to be able to operate 
in some capacity, whether that be a lot or little, for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because I believe in his gospel. Number three, I don't take sides. As far as leadership, men have a job to do in the earth, just like you do, just like I did, just like other people did. We were hired from someone, whether it be in the government or private industry, right? Some powerful corporation or mom and pop's uh, clothing store, right? We have a function in this world. We do so so that we can bear children and raise them up. That was a standing uh, type of uh, thing that happens to continue to replenish the earth. And people, they, they, they live their lives in doing so. So when it comes to my belief that there's a right person or a wrong person to do this or that, well, first of all, looking back through biblical history, I already know that the Lord is involved in everything dealing with his people. And that ultimately, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be based upon the condition of the people. In other words, suppose you pick the right guy, but the people are corrupted. Well, then guess what? If the people are corrupted, you pick the right guy, but the people love corruption. Well, corruption they're going to have. So it doesn't matter who you pick. and doesn't matter. I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to pick a person. When I do things, I do it to the best of my ability as far as my faith will carry me. In other words, I will never select anybody who blatantly would go against Would you guys ever put somebody in position who doesn't believe in Christ or does not like Christ? No, I won't do it. I will not. That's a hands-off situation for me. But the world's going to continue. Whether you participate or not, someone will be selected. And you will feel, you will endure whatever, you know, that person dishes out. Now, when it comes to having a favorite based on hearsay, nope, I don't do that. See, because I know I've seen a lot of good people go sour and I've seen a lot of rotten people turn to Christ. So it really depends upon you. It depends on what you want today, right now. And it depends on what you're accepting already, right now. It's not based on. What you're going to accept in 10 days is based on what you accept right now. That's what that deal is. Somebody says, Mike, is Iran being hit right now? No, but Israel was hit right now. Israel was hit big time. And I do know there are 2,000 missiles pointed towards Israel. And you don't want to know the rest. We'll get to that. You think they're going to wait on Israel's retaliation? You're dealing with a serpent. People with them who will listen. It's in their religion to do anything to burn Israel. They want to overwhelm Israel. And according to the word of God, they will be successful. All these people, all these countries who have indignation against the Holy Covenant, they will succeed. That's what the Bible says ultimately. So it, you know, what you're seeing now is a perpetual development of prophecy. And in that prophecy, there are going to be wins and losses and conflict. I cannot help but to think too many things right now are lining up for it to skip over to something else. And because of man's hearts, let, let's discuss that real quick. Because a lot of people, they, they continually say that, you know, people are going to do the right thing. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Let me tell you about people. People right now are living in kingdoms where these kingdoms have actually fulfilled a, a few prophecies of abomination. It was always said that the living God, that he would bring everything to a close when mankind, by way of its laws, created abominations in the earth. That's called your life, your lifestyle, and what you're willing to put up with. We have so many laws, we actually have a law that defies the core of our own, of our creator in such a way. It is highly grotesque. And I don't hear any daily repentance of it. In fact, I see acceptance of it. Let me share this. If Satan walked this earth, and if he convinced everybody that it was okay to do something that was an abomination to the Most High, I will not agree with him. But many people have already. They're on the outskirts right now in Israel, guys. They're on the outskirts. 
Israel took a, a bad blow and 2,000 missiles are aimed at Israel. I'm trying to cushion the blow. Here's what will happen. If, if, if you guys are not careful, you're going to get built up. You're going to think that Israel is going to have this wonderful victory. It's what you're going to you're going to think that they're going to have this wonderful victory, right? The Bible tells us that many are going to weep. We're not talking about Babylon. We're talking about those who weep between the porch and the altar. Those whose hearts are ripped out because they will see the desolation of Israel. They will see it. They're going to see the desolation of Israel. And they're not going to understand what happened. Why did God allow his country, his land to be hit that way, right? They're not going to understand it. When it happens, it's going to rip the heart out of many people. And many people are going to turn bitter and fall away from the faith because of that. I'm telling you that right now. I'm trying to get people ready so that when that happens, so that when it actually takes place, people will not fall apart in their faith. That they will understand, wait a minute, the Father declared this would take place. People normally, they hear these prophecies, but they don't hear. They won't accept them until it actually happens. And then when it actually happens, that person turns bitter towards everybody else. Why? Because things did not turn out the way they thought it would. See, I'm trying to get people to really ingest or, 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 or swallow to become a part of prophecy that will ultimately come to pass. See, I've been built up in prophecies before. Half of a prophecy is not good. You get somebody built up in a temporary victory. And they rejoice and everything else. And then all of a sudden, without warning, it all falls apart. Then guess what? That's it. The attack on Iran. Do you guys really know what that's going to bring? Do you guys, are you, are you understanding what that's going to bring? This attack on Iran is going to unleash many serpents upon you too. I don't think people really understand the threat the USA is under right now tonight. I don't think you understand how close Department of Homeland Security is to shutting down highways in America right now. Does, is anybody really, are they under, is it, are we really understanding the implications of what happens? Do you know people are going to get happy about this? This is not something people should be happy for. Do you know why? This is another step in prophecy. A terrible prophecy. A heartbreaking prophecy. It brings us closer to the inevitable. And it's not about who wins and who loses. It's about us doing our work with the gospel. Because there are still too many who we are no doubt appointed to reach that we have not touched yet. And when all this stuff backfires, it's going to look like an avalanche that started against the USA and against Israel. Like you can see it coming and you can do nothing about it. It's what I've been seeing for the last 28 years. At the beginning of COT, I was telling everybody that people are about to go crazy. Leadership is going to go and hide. I told people the important folks, you're not going to see them anymore. I remember somebody saying, well, what will they see? They're going to see people who they would not have never selected ever, who you wouldn't associate with being in leadership for a country. That's who's going to be left. But the real people that you had something internal about, right, that the, uh, some of the folks of old, you wouldn't see them anymore. They're going to vanish. You know that happened, and nobody cares. See, because that's when everybody was concerned about, you know, how are these people going to go to their underground bases and this, that, and the other. How are they going to go into these protected areas? I said, well, you're not going to see them anymore. You just won't see them. They're going to vanish. All of them are going to vanish. The only people you're going to see left are people who are a bit, uh, you know, you wouldn't really have picked them out to be in leadership. That's what you're seeing now. That's also a prophecy. That those you would not think of will be in leadership. That's an actual prophecy. There are 2,000 missiles. The skies are about to be quite deadly in the Middle East. We're going to go into Daniel and see this. We're going to have to look at it. When you strike the head of a serpent, and it's a spiritual serpent, you know what happens? The serpent multiplies. It multiplies. It's just like a demon. Demonic entities are sneaky. Many demonic entities, they're not the name they give people. They act 
like there's something else. Just like uh, some of the demons masquerade as though they are Beelzebub. There's a history behind Beelzebub. Anybody who's ever encountered that entity has died miserably. Normally of a sickness that causes a bit of anguish all the way up until the end. But you have many entities who masquerade as Beelzebub. These entities also like to fight each other. They love to wound each other. They love it. They can't go an hour without killing each other. See, because you cannot kill what's already dead. So they just come back. It'd be like you. Many of you can't get enough from hugging someone. Well, to them, killing each other is just like hugging someone. Never try to understand the darkness. It is the opposite of you. But the most joyful things, and we're moved by it, is when we see the underdog being blessed to make it above everybody else. That blesses us in books, in movies, in any type of narrative we like to see it. Well, to them, they love to see the one at the top kill themselves. That fulfills them. Misery fulfills them. Fear fulfills them. In fact, fear is the name of one. Pain is the name of another. Hate is the name of another. And so on and so forth. Because they masquerade behind every emotion that you have. They're doing nothing but multiplying. As part of a watch, you could say. There are many places just within the USA where people have reported seeing demonic entities and these are normal people. And that was back in, you know, 2002. But now they're being scared to death. And since all this paranormal nonsense on television has broken out, you know where these ghost hunters go out there and they start these uh, religious incantations to get a demon out of a person and then on another another time they're sitting down with a with a Ouija board raising or conjuring up a doorway for another demon to come through those type ghost shows that are sh that are diminishing certain authorities that you have so that you won't use them so they can confuse you so you'll think you, you can only get rid of a demonic entity by reading a specific script does anybody know why a person would have to read that same ritual or rite over and over again and how some people, their very presence, can eject a demon. Why the difference? See, in the Bible, there were no scripts that people read. So what was the difference? You ready? You ready? A demon does not have to obey anything of itself. Here's what I mean. If a man believes in Christ, but that same man is full of pride and believes that by his own power he can do things and is built up in pride within himself, pride is not part of the light. Pride is part of the darkness. And so, so long as that vessel is utilizing pride, it nullifies the authorities coming from that vessel. As a person continues to read some over and over again, pride starts leaving. Then they remember, wait a minute, this is by the authority of Christ. Then they stop utilizing pride, especially when an, a dark entity resists them. They start getting scared, trepidation sets up. They go through the anger and everything else. It doesn't work. If a person is angry, frustrated, any of those things, all those things reside within darkness. So what resides within darkness? Everything that's not your father. God spoke of a goodness. He did. So everything in that goodness you are supposed to be. Everything outside of that goodness is in the darkness. And if you carry that with you, you nullify your own authority. And then people end up doing what? Struggling with principalities and powers. Because they don't know how to walk in meekness and humility. They can't surrender fully. They want the power. Anybody who desires to have power is going to be resisted. Because they're the most prideful of all. The one who is the strongest of whom demons will flee automatically are those who already have admitted they have no power, but Christ does. That they're not worthy to carry what they carry, but Christ made them worthy. See, when Christ becomes their everything, every demon in existence will avoid that person. But for those who think they have a solution, they're just inviting more demonic entities in. We don't have a solution to something we cannot see. And people are operating by lies in the invisible world. Do we really trust the words of men concerning entities we cannot see? Really? Are you serious? 
Yet we walk around with anger issues. We walk around with guilt. The All these things I'm talking about are, are, are a fingerprint, a trademark of being touched by the darkness. When darkness touches you, you get guilty. When darkness touches you, you get angry. When darkness touches you, you get prideful. You get murderous. You become an accuser. All sorts of things. I've seen darkness bring the darkness out of people. If darkness can bring darkness out of you, you know, it nullifies your authority, and you can't get rid of what's hounding you. And when that happens in, in people's lives, they end up altering scripture. That's what they end up doing. They, they'll say, well, this doesn't work, so this scripture must mean something else. No, it's quite simple. How many of you believe in God's prophecies? No, 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 let me rephrase that. How many of you believe in Christ? Now, i got to warn you, if you have darkness in your homes, uh, you might want to sit up straight. But how many of you believe in Christ? How many of you are worried about this election? Be honest, because many of you are worried about this election, and you do believe in Christ. Not just a few, this is many, are worried about this election, and you believe in Christ. Oh, how, why am I saying you're worried? Because when you get around your friends who are political, you're drawn in so easily to think just like they do, and you begin to worry about the selection people have for president. See, here's the deal. When you start to hear of your own personal groups, certain things said, something changes internally. Come on now, you know where I'm, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Something changes internally. And all of a sudden your ears are retuned to hear what you did not hear before. Well now, it's all right, it's okay. Because I'll tell you right now, everybody serious I've ever known of who was mature when we had a contentious election and they believed in Christ, they were concerned. You don't think the head of a household, if you're living in a house and somebody says, hey, you're getting new parents, you're not going to be concerned who walks in the door? You're not going to be concerned who's going to govern the house? You live in, how many of you, if the, if the United States all of a sudden said, you have to have a guest living at your dwelling but they're going to pick the guest you mean to tell me you wouldn't care who stepped in your front door have you lost it you wouldn't care who steps in your front door that's what you're telling me you're a believer in christ and you would not care who steps in your front door huh you know what the truth is yes you are concerned many people don't know how to balance faith with matters of the world like this that's the problem Many people don't know how to balance it. They don't know how to have faith. And then to address a concern about who's going to run the country, they run into a problem. Because no doubt people have said, well, if you have faith in Christ, you don't have to worry about who's being selected. Now what they say, oh boy, listen to me. What would you have of a leader? Because if you don't have an answer for this, you're, you're, you're in the wrong. You know that. That's what prayers are for. You already have knowledge of an election. You cannot erase your mind. You also have a direct line to God the Father. Yes, you do. Did you pray about leadership? Because you're here on this earth to make the difference. Do you expect Satan to make the difference? You are here to destroy the works of Satan. Why? Because you say you're in Christ. And Jesus came to destroy the works of Satan. So if you be in Christ, then Christ is in you. Then that means you're a vessel here to destroy the works of the devil. You also have a direct line. You can go boldly to the throne of grace to find help in a time of need. Is this not a time of need? When they have warped the minds of children. I don't mean, mean to offend any of you. I don't want to offend any of you, right? But you have children these days with two mommies or two daddies. Is that sanctioned by the one who created us? Yes or no? No, it was not. So why is it when that subject ups up, even the believers won't say anything? I'm dumb enough to say it to my own hurt because I have a genuine love for people. I know people have been hurt in life, abandoned in life. I know what the hurt and the abandonment feels like. I know people have been, they, they consider themselves as damaged goods. I know people have odd desires. Of course, the flesh is going to desire things that are weird. 
Of course. But that is offset by the Spirit. That is offset by community. The church following the living God. But the church has gone silent concerning such matters. I don't mean to offend anybody here. Because I have a genuine love for humanity. But I'm telling you something I know, not something I might believe. This is not your life. This is the womb. And when you're born, you're born forever. And you're choosing your destination right now. How many of you would condemn your life just for a dream? I don't think anybody would do that. You wouldn't condemn your life just for a dream. You're going to shed that body. And when you shed that body, every desire that's in your flesh is going to die with that body. You will continue to go on. You're going to, you're going to go into a state of knowing all truth and having all love and seeing all things. Many will go into that state knowing they have chosen against their own creator. They will have seen what they truly are. You know what? I wouldn't want my worst enemy to ever go through that. See, I know something in this world. These people who do these uh, the witchcraft and these people who think they're warlocks and these people who sit there and they pat the devil on the back, they're foolish. That's what they are. If they knew who Lucifer was, they would run away from him. It didn't matter if, they, if they're the head of the church of Satan. If they knew who Lucifer was, they would run. And if they knew what hell was, they would tell all those things H-E double hockey sticks know. So what's wrong with those people? They are deceived. They have no idea what they're playing with, what they're toying with, and what they're inviting. You know why they, why they live from day to day? Because even our Father knows how foolish they are. See, when God is done with you, you think you're going to have life? No. God told us why a person continues to live on this earth. He desires that no one perish outside of him. He told us. But if they never pick up a Bible, and if they're never willing to listen to any of these preachers on television, what are they going to hear? What are they going to hear? Here's what's happened. The people God selected to go to people just like that, they don't want to go to them. They want to condemn them. They want to point the finger and accuse them. If I were a Caucasian guy, would you guys step up to me, point at me, and say, you're Caucasian? If I were an Indian, would you come point at me and say, you're Indian. If I were black, would you come and point at me and say, you're black? Would you ever go up to something and waste your energy to call it what it already is? Would you go up to a dog and say, wow, you're a dog? Would you go up to a cat and say, wow, you're a cat? That's what people are doing, wasting their time, calling something what it already is. When the Lord gave them a message, power and authority and good news, to go up to that devil-worshipping person and to address them as the Holy Spirit places upon their hearts. But you got to be willing to go. See, I'm foolish enough to go. I've went to racists and non-racists. I've been to those who worship the Lord and those who say they gave themselves over to some things you don't want to know about. And it's all the same thing. These people are hurt. They do not trust anybody's love. So they get something disconnected from everything. And they start trusting it. They start trusting it because they were hurt by things that they loved. And they do not trust the love of humanity anymore. So they pick out the invisible and begin to serve it. Some people are kicked out of a group. And we're talking about people who have servitude built inside them and they can't serve anything. And they're not a part of anything. And they feel they're wasting away. And so here comes some satanic group. They open their arms. They say, welcome to us. And at least they're being invited in. That's what these people are thinking. You know what that tells me? When, when I first saw this, it means those people are simply not loved. And the first group or people that show them love, they're running to it. Whether it be an, uh, you know, a person of flesh or an invisible person, they're running to it. People want to belong to something. Do you know that? People want a family. And of course they don't know how to belong to something. If they did, they would belong to it already. But they don't. So they run to something else. That's why the Lord put you here on this earth, not to nitpick at one another, but to fight the good fight of faith for those of whom no one is fighting. And in this public world today, all I see is people condemning what's already condemned. We're the intercessors. You know, Jesus said, I did not come here for those who think they're okay. 
He came here to make the lame walk, the blind see. He came for the broken. But we get the word in us. And we condemn the broken. And we turn our full attention to the ones who are not broken. That's why we argue so much. It's built into you to do a work. But if you try to do a work on those who are already believing, you're going to have what? Contentions and strife. All you have to do is turn around back to the folks who have nothing, who don't know the word, and you'll find your placement. People are trying to play it safe. They don't want to talk to anybody outside the church because those people resist. You're made to bring the message to them. Haven't you noticed in certain arguments, people get stuck on these little things, little things, and then Christians begin to argue, no, that's not the way it is, it's that way. Well, let me share this with you. Do you not know that everybody's going to see the word partly skewed from the other person? The word you have in you, you and the way you have it is likely designed for someone to hear it. But you're trying to give somebody something. You're trying to give the hand the message of the foot. And the foot is trying to give the, the, the neck the message that doesn't belong to the neck. Your hand operates differently. Your hand is not concerned about what the foot is concerned about. The foot's not concerned about what the hand is concerned about. Your back is not concerned about what your legs are concerned about, so on and so forth. Jesus said, when we do those individual works and things like that, we're neat. We're, we're Everything we do collectively is collectively in order. But he said we are to be among those who are like-minded. Anyway, things are slipping now, aren't they? Much discipline is lost. Much respect is lost. You know, I can respect anybody with the word of God. Not one soul can accuse me of disrespect. Now that seems unbelievable, doesn't it? But it shouldn't be. Especially if you've been coming to COT for a long time. I'm the same boring person every single day. How can that be possible? But I'm on this microphone in person. I'm the same person every day. God's work is real. Nothing is missing in his word. We're just failing to listen to his word. That we would carry it effectively. We're still operating by things of flesh. Because we still want things to go our way. I have a task for you guys. I'm going to ask you something. Do you want things to turn out your way or the Lord's way? Resolve it quickly. What do you want in your life, in your personal lives? You know, for half of you, this would break the cycle of torment in your families and home. Some of you are out there. You've tried everything. And for five years, you've sat on the line of total collapse. You want to get off that line. Then ask yourself, do you want tomorrow to turn out the Lord's way or your way? you got to settle that one quickly. See, because many of you, you are believers, but you want tomorrow to be a specific way. Do you hear me? That's why you're looking for a solution right now. It's time to face the reality. Do you trust the Lord's goodness? Period. Because if you trust the Lord's goodness, you'll surrender how you want tomorrow to be. That means you're not saying, I'm going to do this or that tomorrow. No. You're not going to say that because you trust what the Lord Jesus has for you. Listen, and here's the big one. When you trust your Lord and Savior, that's when you're no longer in a hurry. Uh-oh. See, I stepped on toes, didn't I? Stepped on toes. See, many of you are in a hurry. Why? If you trust the Lord, how can you be in a hurry? If you trust the Lord, how can you have an emergency? Huh? That's a very simple truth. If we, in fact, trust Jesus of Nazareth, there is no emergency. The world will always have an emergency. But you are not. You're in this world, but not of this world. Or are you? Are you of this world? Because you're up, if you're of this world, you will do the things of this world. But the Bible says you're in this world, but not of this world. That means you're of your Father's kingdom. Why would you be like Martha in the Bible and worry about everything? She worried about things in the Lord's presence. And the Lord told her, I'm paraphrasing, 
hey, you, you need to calm down. We have a good father who has all this under control. What are you doing? You do nothing any good with your worry. You're not going to make anything better nor speed up anything. But you can make things worse. Martha, Jesus put the brakes on her because she was thinking about every little component of everything. Folks, I know that. I know what's happening in the Middle East. Uh, but, um, my goodness. Stay with me on that. Israel is doing that. But here's a bigger story. 2,000 missiles pointed towards Israel. There are different players in the world now. And when you strike a snake, it will multiply. Especially this type of snake, this type of serpent. It's going to multiply. All right. Somebody says, Mike, is the U.S. helping Israel? They've been helping Israel all year, all throughout this crisis. They have been intimately a lot. And I know I stuck to my guns when I said Israel. It was a few weeks ago, didn't I? I said Israel will attack Iran. They most certainly will attack Iran. No, it was a month ago. They will attack Iran. But what I wanted you guys to capture was, when we attack Iran, something else is going to begin. It's going to begin. Concerning that leak, that leak classified document, the whole story, when the whole story comes out, you guys will learn that somebody very close to Benjamin Netanyahu actually leaked that out to some very special contacts, not only in America, but Europe also. See, Europe has to prepare for war, and their timeline is diminishing quickly. They must prepare for war. We're also about to see hypersonics and what they can actually do. The sad system will not intercept what it needs. It's not going to listen. Hypersonics are a very different uh, type of. They're a different type of weapon than uh, standard, you know, projectiles. Very different. It's the only way to truly effectively uh, intercept a hypersonic is with lasers, which is why we have deployed so many. Now Israel and America have had lasers. A project that's been ongoing since 2000 and I believe 17 is when they really started pouring money into it. And it became very, um, it, it, it became essential last year, 2023, March. They've been working on it ever since. Somebody says, Mike, can we pray as a group? Listen, never pray, but never have your prayers inhibited, right? Go ahead and pray. I'm pulling, I'm doing what I'm instructed to do, but pray. Never hesitate to pray. One good thing about prayer, right? And it's happened here in COT quite a bit. This is what they see. This is why we need this. Uh, we need our forms. But when one person starts to pray, we didn't prompt prayer in COT, but everybody would end up praying. I love that. See, I love that. That's why I miss some of the elders, some of the, some of the older, uh, uh, on the, on the female side of the church. Nothing would ever stop them from praying. You guys, you guys know those. Right? You know those. But don't worry. Our Father has outlined everything that's happening in the Middle East. Intimately. You hear me? Intimately. And listen, hear me on this. We should pray always. That's why the Lord lays it upon your heart. Don't let anybody else stall you in prayer. You start praying. In fact, if all of us would do as we were instructed to do, my goodness, what a powerful movement that would be in these last days. It's imperative that you guys understand what is in that prophecy. Because I guarantee everybody's happy about, lots of people are happy about Israel hitting Iran. And they have no idea about the repercussions, the betrayal that's in Jerusalem, the betrayal that's within most governments right now. Someone said, do we do collective fasting and COT? No, sir. we haven't done that yet. I have not um, directed one yet collectively. Not collectively, no. It's important to me. Listen, the Lord uses me in this way. Before we do things here in COT, he'll often put it in me to explain it collectively, right? Because I know other people have their way of doing things, but the Lord put a, a, a way in me to do things, and I won't. I never yield from what the Lord put in me. It's important to me to carry out the instruction the Lord gave me. Fasting is not something that should ever be played with. Fasting should be well understood before anybody ever fasts. It should be understood what you're doing. 
and why you're doing it. it has to be understood that things be effective. See, because I know that any spiritual step you take can be effective. But I also know that when you don't understand what you're doing, they can be highly ineffective. It's almost like the Lord when he told us a person who prays but doesn't believe they're going to receive anything. The Lord said that person ought not think they're going to receive anything from the Most High. That means a, a nullified prayer, right? That means, in fact, you can waste your time in doing something you don't know the fullness of. So when people understand it, they can spiritually go forward in obedience. The Lord's way, there will be an outcome. When the Lord lays something on you, though, you instruct the people to do with the Lord whatever the Lord laid upon your hearts. And you do it without hesitation. You do it wholeheartedly. You do that. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back from this break. Oh, oh by the way, listen. I know you guys ex You guys want me to talk about Israel being hit, right? I'm, I can't do that. But they're, they're, Iran is the plan that's going forward. I will talk about the repercussions. I'm sure that everybody else is covering Iran being hit by Israel. But I will talk about the repercussions. I, it's, not, it's not a good idea for me to cover any active uh, thing taking place. Right? That's not very good. Especially any area that's tactical where I could have some official knowledge. That would not be a good thing. But I will talk about the repercussions. The repercussions are what people are not ready for. And it's unfortunate. But the repercussions are being formed right now as we speak. Even I was hoping that Israel would not go forward. But their targets are very specific. And they had to do it prior to the setup of Russia. If that, if that helps you guys understand anything. I don't want you hoping for one thing. And then everything collapses right in front of your faces. An upset is coming. And you've not ever gone through this before. This is, it won't be 9-11. This you have not gone through. I think you guys deserve a deeper look into it. I really do want you folks to be prepared for it. Many will fall away, and the first step has already been taken. Israel's move is the first step. I'll be back in a few minutes, right here at the Council of Time. All right, so you guys probably have noticed the uh, strategic strike has happened. I'll say one thing about it. It's an unknown. I don't know this part. If they hit too many locations that cripple certain abilities of Iran, it's not good because what's happening now is there are convoys that have been on the move. They've been on the move since uh, around Eastern time, probably around 6, 15. They already know locations, missiles that have been set up. Israel cannot touch them because they were... America is not striking anybody, but you better believe me, they are managing what's being hit. Does that make sense? America's managing what's being hit. Because here's the big concern. If Israel hits too many places that are strategic and they ruin the, the capability of Iran to do specific things, it's over. It's over. See, because we have Russia which is also monitoring places being hit. You have Syria, who's talking to Russia right now, Saudi Arabia, who they're the ones that requested um, military vehicles, military jets. They have their boys being trained to fly, this, that, and the other, right? So there, there are a lot of troops surrounding Israel that could actually muster uh, within minutes for some type of retaliation. They know that the Houthis, they know that um, uh, Hezbollah forces, that right now they, they cannot really hit them because of Syria. They know that they have pods set up against uh, Israel. Israel was hit today in a very bad location, and this was not a normal weapon. That was utilized, it wasn't a normal rocket. It went right through Iron Dome and the THAAD system. I believe they did that to demonstrate something which prompted Israel's strike. At least we got the timing right. 
The unknown is if they will hit too many targets, whether precision uh, munitions or not, whether they hit the right locations. Suppose they hit every location that is meant to be hit. I'm telling you right now, if they succeed, and if they, if the enemy declares that they have hit too many, it's just not going to be good. That means the whole board of warfare will change to an alternative solution within minutes. That's an unknown because no one knows exactly to the extent, what extent Israel is going to go. Right now they're confined with uh, agreed upon targets because beyond that well that's it will be some retaliation that retaliation is going to be deadly so hopefully nobody is uh will let their guard down over this so we could see an escalation from this point i personally believe it's going to backfire it's another excuse against israel israel did this for the sake of the people because the cry in Israel was so loud, the people wanted vengeance, a response in proportion to what was done to them. The people called for this. They did this. That's our world. It's based on revenge. It's based on expressing how powerful you are. But in this case, this has never happened before. Never once have we had a Middle Eastern nation of one promise by faith in biblical history hit a nation of another promise by a promise in their biblical nature we've, we've not had this before this is a very different engagement and it will not end today it's beginning today when they declare this as overreach that's when your heart may sink you've got to be prepared for the book of Daniel to come to pass I hope that all of us understand it specifically chapter 11 in the book of Daniel we read that often here in COT chapter 11 this very important chapter it shows us the conflict in the Middle East taking off it shows us how the prince of the covenant the prince of the holy covenant engages with the rest of the world and eventually how all those listen all of those who have indignation against the Holy Covenant, how they put their power together and overwhelm Israel. There are spots in chapter 11, portions in chapter 11 that give us an idea as to the timing, right? Gives us an idea. The timing is always based on capability. In the Bible, when you're reading about what, na what one nation will do against the other, you have to consider the capabilities of that nation. Some prophecies don't happen because the nations did not have the capability. When they have that capability, it's almost like immediately you start to see prophecy go into effect. Now, this prophecy is not a one-day prophecy. It's a progressive prophecy that will build up to the point where they go in collectively and they take Jerusalem and they cause oblation to cease. They take away the daily sacrifice. And they place the abomination that makes it desolate there. That's when Jesus gave the instruction for those in Judea to flee into the mountains. Many Christians believe they're not going to see that. But the Bible is very specific. The day of the Lord is what people are waiting on. Right? When the dead rise first. In the day of the Lord... That, that, that day at the last trump, that's what people are waiting for. They call it the rapture, the last trump. When the mystery of God should be finished, what he has disclosed to his servants, the prophets, when that is disclosed, when it's finished at the last trump, then those who are alive will be caught up in the air to be with the Lord. But they will not withstand those who sleep in the earth, the dead in Christ, will rise first. Then those who are alive at that time will be caught up in the air and forever be with the Lord. But we know the dead will not rise till two specific things take place. According to the Bible, not according to popularity, according to the word of God, one of the apostles already said it, that day shall not come 
lest there come a falling away first, and that man of perdition be revealed, the son of perdition. So that day, that notable day, is not coming, lest there come a falling away, and that man of perdition is revealed. Those are two things. People just giving up on their faith or turning over to falsehoods, right? And then the man of perdition, of doom, that word perdition is doom. He must be revealed. He must be revealed. According to the book of Daniel, that person is revealed. Once they launch their assault on Jerusalem, they will take Jerusalem. They'll take it. Now, what is that army that's going to take Jerusalem? What happens before that? Well, because see, in the book of Daniel, it's very specific. It says the king of the north is going to speak to the king of the south, the prince of the covenant, the prince of the holy covenant. There's only one holy covenant that an angel would call holy. That is the covenant with Israel. They're going to speak lies at one table. That means politics. To speak lies at one table is negotiation. That was often called speaking lies at one table is negotiation. We know they negotiate at the UN. It says, but they're going to forecast devices against them. By speech, things won't take place because by speech, they're going to tie the hands of Israel. This person who has indignation against the Holy Covenant after subduing much, which, by the way, really take place subduing much, they're going to return to their own land with indignation, and then they're going to have come back later on and have intelligence with them who also forsake the Holy Covenant, who have indignation against the Holy Covenant. So all those nations who have indignation against the Holy Covenant, who do not believe that Israel should be there, they're going to join forces. What you're seeing right now is a catalyst, an eye-opener for the Middle East. A determination will be made soon, and it will not be in favor of Israel. And there will be a regime change. There's going to be a regime change in Israel. In Israel. Regime change. That means... No more of these individuals who have actual resolve to protect Israel, but you're going to have compromises in place. And during that time, they're going to collectively go into Israel, take it over, set up new administration that the world will be bedazzled by. What will happen in Jerusalem will spread throughout the whole earth. And through Jerusalem, many will obey. It's that part when we do. But we see the formation of it right now. So while people are getting excited, I don't know why they have about Israel retaliating, they ought to know that collectively, armies are collectively in perfect unit resolving their tactical plans against Israel and Jerusalem right now. Israel's retaliation is a fulfillment of what they expected. The question is, will it be enough to move the needle of opinions of people to say that Israel utilized too much force against a nation? You watch, mark my words, they're going to betray the fact that Israel had a little more power than everybody else. And they used that power, abused that power against a country that could not defend itself from that salt. When this happens, the world is going to hand over power to another regime. There will be a regime change. And you might want to know right now that a, a false messiah is involved in all of this. A false messiah to which many people in America will believe. Just know this. The Lord said if, the, if they say the messiah is in secret chambers, don't believe it. If they say he's in the desert, don't go forth, don't believe it. When the Messiah comes, everybody will see him at the exact same time. There is no mistaking the Messiah's arrival. You will have internal recognition of the Messiah beyond your own physical comprehension. No one is going to know his location in secret. No one. So any Messiah that comes and they say they know his secret location, that's a lie. It's a falsehood. When the Lord comes back, he'll do so as lightning 
that shines from the, you know, from the east to the west. And what does that mean? As lightning strikes and you have recognition of lightning, everybody does. They can see it. So will you have recognition of Jesus Christ? And the Bible says you're going to behold, many will behold God's people under great duress. And they will cleave or embrace them with flatteries. My goodness. You guys get that so far? This is in, no doubt a catalyst. Catalyst indeed. Prepare yourselves to see the fulfillment of the word of the Lord in this portion. Prepare yourselves to see what most refuse to discuss. Somebody said, Mike, will they use Project Bluebeam? Well, how many of you are interested in that? About this so-called Project Bluebeam? Satan is going to use everything he inspired to muddy the waters of understanding. Remember that. He's going to use everything he inspired mankind to make to cause you to go astray. Let me give you the big thing because what he wants you to listen. One of the number one things Satan wants of you right now that nobody really wants to discuss, but I'm going to go ahead and say it is. He wants you to have a sinful life and to excuse your own sinful life every single day. That's what he wants. He wants you to be okay with sin. He does not want you to walk that line of obedience, to strive harder every single day, to believe in those principles of the Father. He didn't want you to do that. He wants you to be a friend of the world. You know what the Bible says? You know what the Bible says? That the world is not your friend. It also says to love this world is to have enmity with God. That's angry, separation with God. You know what most people who believe have done? They love the things in this world. They crave them. They just don't share it with everybody. Now that's a gut-wrenching statement for me. Because I know what that fight is. That's a fight. That's a real fight. That means if we're compromised like that, no wonder we have such a difficult time in those things righteousness. I will share this though. Listen to me. You guys do realize this is uh, COT's time. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. Here's what that means. This is, this is the time meant for us. This is part of my calling. This time is part of my calling. I'm going to share this with you guys. For a long time, COT has been, we've had our rocky roads, ups and downs, battles we fought and everything else, but we're still here. And that is a miracle within itself. We're still here. And this is that moment, I think, Satan is, he didn't want this moment to come. He's been very busy trying to shut us down, shut me up. He's been trying to shut me up. Because I'm not, listen, I, I'm, I'm not compromising with these messages in the world. I'm not doing that. God's word is extremely important. And it is the only thing I trust. It really is. I don't trust anything else. As a result of that, because this is our hour. This is when we begin to move at light speed. This is that moment we bring things to bear. Things have been what they have been. But it's only God the Father who could have brought us this far in the first place. Nobody else could have. Nobody else could have coordinated on such a level. And while you have these folks out there busy trying to break COT down, well, there are some folks who have made a placement for the opinions of COT on a national scale. Unbelievable time we live in. But a beautiful thing. There are going to be other folks when other things begin to fail. Listen, because concepts are going to fall apart. Outlooks are going to fail. They're going to fail. They're not going to pan out. Some people are going to burn themselves out. Trusting the Most High is imperative. Trusting His Word is a good place to be. Staying yourselves upon his principles is a good place to be. Because everything else you're going to find is highly unworthy. Or it has been hype at most. My goodness. The Lord is so good. We have a mission in COT here. Dealing with the gospel in a time where many are going to start to just, they're going to, they're going to see it's not worth it. That's what they'll say. It's not worth it. Many are folding as we speak. And do you know why? It's sad to say, but when when people no longer find it lucrative, they won't do it. Many of you have seen your local 
many local churches shut down. How many of you have seen that? Local churches just shutting down left and right. The saddest thing you could ever see. This time is bringing about what's been inside. What, what's been on the inside is coming to the outside. It's coming to the surface. It's going to be seen. So everything will become transparent. Regardless, it, it doesn't matter. It's going to become transparent. You're going to see the truth of it. Now, some people, when they see the truth of what's been on the inside, it's, it's not going to feel so good. We're going through a time where people, when they start seeing what's on the inside of most things, they're not going to like it. In some things, you will. In many cases, you're going to be shocked. Do you guys know, speaking about shocked, I'm going to share something with you guys. Now, you guys know I've had a status change in my career for, what, the last four years now? It's been three, four years now. And this has to have been the, the toughest three, four years I've ever had in my life. Although COT has been going, been building up slowly, right? Now, I want you to think of something and tell me this is not our Father in Heaven. We're given something that is pretty pricey to uh, to get it going. It's, it's very pricey to get it going. Although, you know, the first stage, first stages are done and that's pretty pricey. I do not compromise. And when I say no to something, then that's exactly what I mean. And in these days that we live in now, Many want you to take these, uh, do these little secret things. I can't do that stuff anymore. So some things have been going on with COT. Some hard wrenching, some not. But we've been going forward. I've gone through lots of prayer, but I've been going forward. The Lord has never failed once. Most people don't have the issues that we do, not COT. Not that I do, right? Because we're set up differently. Look at me, for example. You guys have not seen me. So I can't take credit for anything. Have you noticed that? Think about that. There's no going out there to have a good reputation and make, a, you know, income like everybody else off your, you know, hard work that you're putting in for the ministry. You, know, you can't do that when nobody knows you. Think about that. So then, in truth, all glory to God. You can't capitalize when you do it this way, which is why I don't recommend this model to anybody. I don't. But I was somewhat called this way. Most people, they get out there, you can see their faces. They have things accredited to them, and they can do this and the other. But with me, it, it's important that the Lord's word go forward. I'll be here one day, gone the next. I knew that before it ever began. In other words, those things that truly are the word of God, they are the things that will be long-term and established in this place, not me. It, because it's not about me. It's not about a person. It's about the Lord's word. Which is why I'm so passionate about the Lord's Word. A lot of times in my hurt. It caused many problems in my professional career. It causes problems to this very day. Because it's not, it's not fully understood. But now we live in different days. Very different days. Now we live in times where the unbelievable things, they'll surface. They're going to grip people like nothing has ever before. The betrayals are days away. They're happening already, but the bigger ones are on the way. People will find out that they've made some grave mistakes in some things, and that they let some precious things go in other ways. The Lord put it best. He said, there's no good in the day of the Lord for anybody. That's what he said. That's why I said, only a fool would ask for the day of the Lord. For what good is in it for them? It's like escaping a bear. Then you go to your house and put your hand on the wall and you're bitten by a snake. That's what he said. So good in it. And we're coming to those days. The trying times. For you, it's going to be trying because your faith is involved. Satan is going to directly try to make you sin and give yourself over to sin. That's what he's interested in. For you to corrupt yourselves. He's legalizing Everything that will tempt you. Search out the policies that are making the biggest waves in this world. And you're going to find out that every single last one of them causes you to freely go back into sin. It's causing sin to be legal. Things that ordinarily people would look down upon. Now you can do them in the open without any persecution from the world. But they are wrong to the living God. But they're legal. 
these are the things, right? This is, and, and my specific, my specific calling is against everything I served with. It truly is. Mine is one I wouldn't really wish upon anybody. I'll do it gladly. This is that time. You guys, it's going to, each one of you, you already know it. It's going to be required of each one of you to make some real decisions. No more can a person sit in the middle and think they're safe. That doesn't exist anymore. This is a promised time. Now, this is something you may not know. You may not understand this is the most blessed time in history. You may not understand that. Let me share with you why. Many of you have been servants of the Lord for some time now. You have. But you're still not mega witnesses of God's hand. It's almost like you know the word, you accept certain conditions you've been learning for a while. Now it's time when you put the word of God to use. Now it's time to see how he delivers. Now it's time for you to be witnesses of his scriptures, to see the unbelievable things, to go through unbelievable things, to be delivered supernaturally. Now is the time because darkness is rising faster and faster. No, it is. And life-altering events will begin almost like clockwork in days. You're right there at a door you never saw before. You really are. The word is going to be important in this time. The word, not the popular sayings that are in the world. The word of God. Just in case you haven't noticed, what's popular to say in the world does not always match what's in the Word of God. The Word of God is important, not the popular sayings. And some of you who, you've been a little rough around the edges, and so what? Things will be moved out of the way. Obstacles. You know those obstacles that you guys couldn't get rid of? You're going to see them just dissolve right in front of your face. Here's a question now. Without obstacles... What are you going to do? Because let me share something with you. Bait is going to be set out right in front of your face. What do I mean by bait? Prosperity you never thought possible. I hope you're listening to me. You know how everybody is calling for a financial collapse? But I'm the dodo who said something different. I said a utopia is about to begin. You remember that? But everybody's looking for the, the thing that's obvious. Do you not know that Satan would not deceive a soul if things were so obvious? If people could really figure it out. Do you know from the beginning to the present day, how many people figured Satan out? Not too many, because all of his tricks were working. They have worked up until this point. Why have they worked? Because as being human beings, we have this bad habit. If something makes sense, we think it's going to happen. Well, let me share this with you. Satan, Satanas, he does not make sense. He doesn't do the logical thing. This dude is chaos, which is why he's so effective. When, when people are locked into a narrative and they're looking with expectation in a direction for what they thought would come to pass based off their logic, they get hit from the side every single time. Like now, a lot of people are probably saying now, okay, Israel has hit Iran and we can get everything back to the table, start this, you know, the peace thing, and we're going to go. Telling you right now, everything's going to happen by force. You can call things an accident all day from this point forward. I'm going to call it murder. There will be a regime change. I'm going to call it murder. You're about to witness how cruel these times are going to be inside the darkness but you're not inside the darkness you, this is what you have to know you will see the cruelty you will smell the stench but all these things happening is not to punish any of you you will see the truth of the world you live in you're going to see it you're going to see the abominable rewarded you see you're going to witness it you got to get yourselves ready for that because it won't be a celebration as you uphold sin, if you're one of those that uphold sin, you can celebrate. But this time we live in now, you're going to see the truth of darkness. How darkness really operates. Darkness does not want to scare you. It wants to embrace you, to make you one with it. Darkness would want you not to see it. 
He wants you to become a part of it. He wants you to deny it's at work and do what it does. That's what darkness wants from you. It wants to compromise you. It wants you to ultimately accept an alternative Messiah. That's what it wants. And it's going to bait you, lay things before you, present to you a type of salvation to get you out of debt, to get you into the utopia, to tell you you can have anything you want to make your life better if you would only just stop standing on the principles of old ideas. You know, in the Bible, when I said, consider the ways of old, you know, when the Bible, when it says, go back and do the first works, remember that? Yeah, that's where I'm going to be. But many will take this new path. I would tell you something else, but you guys won't believe it. Not right now. It's too divisive. But So I'll put it to you this way. You know how when you're expecting something from someone in the world, but then here's what people are going to see. Mark me on this. Mark, Write it down. Do what you have to do. And it's, it's, it's just not a good thing, but they're going to see it. They're going to see a person start to do the very things that nobody ever thought they would do. But then the people are going to start saying, oh, yeah, well, that person has to do it. Then it's going to get to the point where that person will have become the very things they hated the most. You ever see a person do that? Become the thing they hate the most. You ever do that yourself? Become the thing you hate the most. Somebody in here knows exactly what I'm talking about. You ever do that thing that you hated the most? I had a cousin one time. He hated people who smoked cigarettes. And then when he turned, um, it's about 18 or something like that, I saw him smoking a cigarette. I said, well, what happened? You hate it. You talked about people smoking cigarettes from day one. This person ended up smoking. So you end up, you end up doing the very things you spoke against that you pointed out others as doing. Mark my words, write them down slowly but surely and very quickly. You're going to see people adopting things. Now, at first, many will say, okay, they had to do that because of this, or, you know, they had, they're going to justify it. Then it's going to reach a point beyond justification. And then the very ones who fought for the person will fight against it. You're going to see this across the whole board. It's not to a person's detriment. It's to demonstrate something else. There is no victory. There is no good ending without a good father. The Lord establishes a good ending. Man does not have that capability. When it comes to its fullness, many who believe in Christ will be released from a type of illusion that so often comes with brokenness. Free they will be. Rejoice they will. Because they won't fall for any of that again. Then they'll understand, hey, I'm here to intercede for mankind. Not to follow mankind. I'm in this world, not of this world. I'm here to call upon the name of the Lord in the places where they're not calling upon Him. There's a work that needs to be done. You people will see that work. But they have to go through betrayal first. They have to be backstabbed first. So they can be free of this notion that somehow, maybe, men can fulfill the role by Creator. Just in this small capacity. Nope, they will not. Only God will fulfill what God can fulfill. Man will not. And many will learn that lesson. And they will be free from following man ever again. You'll see it. In certain ways, you've gone through this in your personal lives. You're going to see the truth. You will see the truth of things. God made us a promise. He made us a promise that anything that we hold in our hands that is not of him it's going to be crushed. It's going to be undone right before us. And in many cases, it will affect us. He says he does not do this to our hurt. But he's doing this to deliver us. That nothing falls. That we'll hold up nothing false and believe in it, thinking it's real when it really is not. In order for us not to follow a falsehood, then those things we uphold have to dissolve in front of us. They're going to have to hurt our feelings. They're going to have to let us down. They're going to have to fall apart, fold up right in front of us. But we'll be free afterward. 
See, God said we'll be free afterward. After that thing is burnt away, after it no longer exists the way it did, then we'll be free. See, because freedom is this. Freedom is when there's no alternative but the living God. Freedom is when there's nothing that can take God's place. When we instantly look towards the living God and say he's our answer, when we're not looking anywhere else, then we're free. See, if you can look in another place and say, well, maybe that's going to work, you're not going to be free. You're going to go through a cycle over and over again. And how many people have gone through these cycles over and over again thinking, well, I got new knowledge now. I'm believing in this other thing. It's going to fail too. And the other thing is going to fail. And this thing is going to fail. The only thing that won't fail is the living God. So God said he's going to make, he's going to burn things up in our hands. And he said he does not do it to a person's hurt. He does it so they can be free. He's going to do it so they can be free. You know what that means? What you uphold in life must fail you. It's going to have to fail you so that you can truly see where your help comes from. See, because I read somewhere that your help comes from the hills. I, I read that somewhere. We're not talking about what most think we're talking about. The Lord establishes your path, victory. And there are no alternatives when it comes to your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the title he gave you is a real one, not some fake one. But you'll never see that so long as you're trusting in things. That by way of an illusion, a type of illusion, or strong. When you see what is strong, fold up right in front of you. You'll never make that mistake again. That'll be a time within itself. But it's necessary. Because when... The one thing steps forward for the first time for the whole world. Do you understand that anybody who worships that thing is gone forever? See, because the word says, if you're written in the book of life, you will not worship the dragon. You will not worship the beast. You will not take the mark of the beast. But it says, if you're not written in the book, you will take that mark. That means when the time comes, listen, when the time comes, the question is going to be, can you withstand it or not? The Lord's taking you through a process. He's the one that is able to keep you from falling. Haven't you read that in the New Testament? That it's our Lord Jesus who can keep us from falling. He is able to keep us from falling. Do you hear me? You won't do it. None of us were ever meant to deliver ourselves. Not one of us. Mankind will not deliver you. You won't deliver yourself. So that means you don't have the answer. You have a Savior. Isn't that funny? We have a Savior. Why do we keep trying to save ourselves? Why do we keep trying to pick something to save everybody else? We pick everything but the Messiah. No. Mankind will learn... He may pick what he wants to pick, and he can do so based upon his convictions. But he must never make the mistake. It is Christ who will deliver us. Christ has been given that mantle of power over us. It is the word of God that will deliver us. Man can pick whomever he wants, but they better not make the mistake. It is Christ who delivers us. Man has shown a consistent, a consistent ability to not be able to choose the right thing all the time. What makes people think that all of a sudden man is going to choose the right thing the final time? It won't. My goodness. Be prepared in your hearts. Be prepared in your hearts. With our Father's hand we'll do the unbelievable thing. Hope you guys are ready. Time to move at light speed. Somebody asked me this question one time. He said, Mike, why should I vote? I'm sure you guys have gotten lots of answers up for that, right? But they said, why should I vote? Well, let me give you guys a COT answer. You ready? Why should a person vote? You know, um, it's been established. When, when God spoke to King Nebuchadnezzar, he said, he made, a, he made a point to King Nebuchadnezzar through the interpretation of Daniel that God selects kings 
So when anyone does that, this person said, but why should I vote? If God selects kings, if he's going to do so anyway, why should I vote? He said, by the way, I can't even trust the vote in the first place. So I have an answer. I'll tell you the first part. Why should a person vote? First of all, you have to do what the Lord instructs you to do. Now, the Lord will instruct each person differently. That's the first thing you have to realize. That's why I respect everybody's decision. If it's one thing I'll never do, I never, ever desire to manipulate anybody's choice. It's important to me that people do exactly what the Lord has given them to do. If I wanted everybody to do what I think the Lord wants them to do, then I'm assuming I'm right, and that's prideful. I'll never assume I'm right. No, 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 no. With great humility and meekness, I'll go forward, praying that I'm doing what the Lord has instructed me to do. I will never assume I'm right. So never expect that from me. That's a prideful mindset. I don't do that. But here's the COT answer. The Lord has blessed us so much. He's given you a body where you can walk with your legs and do manipulate things with your hands. And Will the Lord transport you from your house to the grocery store and back to your house supernaturally? No, he won't. He won't. Why won't he? Why will he not beam you up and put you in a grocery store and beam you out of the grocery store back home? Why not just beam you the groceries? I'll tell you why. Because he's already blessed you with capabilities that you could do it. I found out something. It's, it's a saying I always use in COT. You guys have heard it, right? I ask you guys, I ask this question a lot, especially when I get started. There's certain things in the Bible I say, will God tie your shoelaces? The answer is no. Why not? Because you have the ability to tie them. So long as he's, he's blessed you with an ability to do something, that's a blessing. So long as that stands, he will not do it because he's already empowered you to do it. Blessing means empowerment. You've been empowered to do things. You've been empowered. How come God won't heal my teeth? Because he put the resources around you. See, God does not encourage us to be lazy. And when he blesses people with supernatural wisdom and the supernatural abilities to be good dentists and doctors, sing guess what? It's required of us to recognize what he's already blessed us with, to utilize what he has put in place. Now, if there are no dentists, I know the Lord will intervene. If there are no doctors, I know the Lord will intervene supernaturally. But if he's given you an ability to do something, then he's already blessed you. He's already blessed you. You, you guys understand. You'll find that with everything in your life. If God has already blessed you with an ability to do something, it's up to you to do it or not. If he puts something in place, it's up to you to do it or not. But listen, seek his instruction. Do what he instructed. But when it comes to him doing things, if he already given, has given you the ability to do it, then do all of what you can. I know this. Here it is. God requires of us to exhaust what we're able to do and whatever we're not able to do then he'll do it if you're not able to see that's what my whole life is based on there are some things i'm not able to do and the lord has stepped in every single time not sometimes every time but see there are things i have an ability to do and it's required of me ask a plumber ask a mechanic and he, they, they'll tell you well, you know, I was sitting around and there was absolutely nothing to do and my car would not start. A plumber will say, you know, I was sitting around and I was enjoying myself, relaxing, finally got everything done. And the pipe broke for no reason in the weirdest place where it's not supposed to break. They always come up with these weird stories because the Lord requires of you what he has blessed you to be able to do. And when it comes to those skill sets. There's always something you're going to have to do with that skill set, which is why I gave it to you in the first place. If you ever think you're going to sit idle on what he's blessed you to do, forget about it. If you know how to do it, it will be required of you. So, when it comes to voting, 
God has set up a mechanism by which you, because a lot of people say, Lord, well, the Lord's going to select the right leader. That's right. But he works through his body. He works through humanity. Why does he do that? Because he's the one that said he would do it. Anybody want proof? I can share one spot with you where God said he would do it that way. Anybody want proof? Anybody? Anybody want proof? Here it is. If you give, it's going to be given to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give into your bosom? There it is. See, your father's actually doing it, but it's coming to you physically through what? Man. You'll find that all throughout scripture. When man cannot do it, expect something supernatural. When doctors can't solve it, expect something supernatural. When nothing can move it, expect something supernatural. But wherever God has given an ability, he's blessed us already. When he gives you an ability to do something, that's a blessing. So what happens when God blesses you already, but you refuse that blessing and you want another? Uh-oh, you're the one you're going to sit empty. Us refusing... To utilize what the Lord has empowered us with. Or we're just going to sit there. You see it? There you go. God has empowered you based upon his instruction. He has empowered you to make a difference. Doesn't matter what the machines do. I'm telling you right now, when you get involved, everything changes. When you get involved, everything will always change. It will always. It will change. Why? Because you're involved. Because you're his child. Because there are promises over your life. They're not going anywhere. Right? They're over your life. Period. Point blank. That's why it's important you do exactly what the Lord has given you to do. I'll say it again. It's important for you to do what the Lord gave you to do. I will never sit here and act like I know exactly what you're supposed to do. No. You get that from your Father in Heaven. Because I will certainly act on my Father's Word. If the Lord gives me something, he already knows I'm going to do it to my own detriment, hurt, whatever else. I'm going to do it. I don't hesitate. I guess you could say I'm a real radical. The Lord will put up within you what you are to do. But listen, listen. I See, I do things by faith. I don't do it because I'm persuaded to do it by men. I need instruction by the living God. In my life. I've always found out that when people persuade me, it's always been the wrong move. That's why I need it from the Lord. And he has never failed to give me guidance. Just as he will never fail to give you guidance. All of you have gotten the guidance. When you start to compare what the Lord gave you with everybody else's stuff, that's where you get yourself in trouble. Do it his way this time and see for yourselves. That's between you and the Father. It's not my business what he gave you. It's only my business to let you know that he's empowered you to do some things. And so follow his instruction as best you can, utilizing everything you have to do it. When should you expect a miracle? When you have exhausted everything and when nothing else can do it, your Father will. It, by the way, because it's your father who starts the whole thing. And it's your father who will finish the whole thing. I love that statement in the Bible. He will finish the work he began in you. So we, if you can't do it, he's going to do it. Okay, let's get to some questions here. Oh, someone says, Brother Mike, I've been watching videos on social media. Of people claiming to see and record the star of Jacob they have. This morning I was sent one of the videos and then sent uh, scripture and numbers, so on and so forth. What are your thoughts about I, well, I don't look at videos and claims, and I'll tell you why. I, I see a lot of direct things, right? In order for me to remain authentic, it's important for me not to see everybody else's stuff. If I start seeing everybody else's stuff, then what I have in me is going to be diluted or could be quickly altered by seeing somebody else's stuff. For me to be honest with you guys, I can't comb through anybody else's information. I have to go with what the Lord has given me directly, right? So then, when other people have knowledge of things, I become the student quickly. When you guys have things, I'm the student, right? But when the Lord gives me something, then I have to give it to you in honesty. You know, I learned that from dreams. If you alter a dream in the slightest way, 
you will end up regretting it, especially when you've been told to give that dream to somebody else. If you alter it in the slightest way, you'll end up regretting it. One day in my life, I tried to make a dream seem more sensible because it was, you know, parts in there that were weird and ridiculous. So I left them out. Well, it was those weird and ridiculous parts that made the difference. And because of my dodoism, it just messed up the whole communication. So, no, it, it's important that no matter how wacky it is, no matter how odd it is, strange, whatever the case is, when I believe something is from the most high, I'm going to give it to you as the Lord gave it to me. I have to, and it can't be altered in any way. So if I look at other people's stuff, it'll be altered. Now, seeing what you're talking about, I really have no thoughts on that because you're about to see a whole lot more. Right? I know it's fascinating and things of that nature, and I'm not going to discount it. But my focus and concentration is in what's going to directly affect your lives and your family's lives. And those things are coming you know, quicker than anticipated. So there's a, a, a somewhat my focus. See, there are some subjects I'll never touch because I have no experience in those subjects. And there are other subjects I won't shut up about. And those subjects will come. Somebody says, question, do you think that today's tech and run could cause the election to be... I think the election is going to be stalled anyway. Listen, after everybody votes and puts the votes in, uh, there are going to be problems. Things are going to be contested. Legal battles are going to be fought. So this election is going to be a mess, period. Prepare yourselves for that. Don't expect to have an answer that night. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it to yourselves. And by the way, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even trust the polls because the polls have never accurately forecasted anything. They've been wrong, uh, starting with Obama. They've been wrong, badly wrong. And there's a reason for that. So, there that is. Hope I hope that uh, answers that question. Do you think things will calm down in the Middle East, or do you believe that start today will lead to trampling of Jerusalem? I know it's going to lead to the trampling of Jerusalem underfoot. Today's activity, right? I, I, there was part of me that hoped that Israel would not do anything to Iran. Here's the deal: when because Israel is a is a is a power in the Middle East, right? Now, you may not know this, many of you may not know this, but these Middle Eastern countries, when uh, the generals, these foreign generals in Iran and other places and counterparts, they start talking, they, it, there's a consensus that when Israel, when you mess with Israel, you're messing with the West. That's a consensus, which is why Israel being so tiny is, is fight, can fight everybody in the Middle East and win. Right? There's a consensus. They're fighting the West. And I'm telling you that that will not last long. Through Israel's retaliation, they're going to call foul. When they call foul, it'll be due to an overreach, an improportionate response. That will, by way of policy and sanctions, alter greatly what Israel's uh, armed services can and cannot do. I want everybody to understand that the Lord's word is quite clear. It is quite clear. You're going to behold these things. It's not. This is not meant for judgment in your life. It is going to be purposed to burn up falsehoods that you may hold close. Because the time of times is coming. And something is about to walk the earth. And it will look in the face of every living soul on this planet. And that's about the only thing I have a bit of... Uh, trepidation with just so you guys know that trying to see you go back there like how are they installing council council's already there we're going to talk about that one day extensively uh, we're going to have to go through the structure of government and some hidden some some things some procedures uh that normally happen that you probably have you've seen the result of you just didn't know that it went through that procedure and once you see that procedure and how many bills have been affected by it, then you'll start to see it. So it's almost like a fail, I'll say. But these are the days, right, where, where they're, they're, listen, uh, 2015, I said this, I'll say it again. In order for people to accept a new type of government, they have to prove that the old government no longer works. 
that means it must fail component by component in the people's eyes. And so when you take the most aggressive side of society, their words not mine, and you cause the mechanism of politics to fail for that side, they will force change with all. It will impact people when the aggressive start changing. Do you think other, any other nations will follow suit attacking us? Of course I do. The, uh, the is a certain retrofit that took place in the last two weeks, for example, uh, titanium plates have been put in to a lot of places. Um, even this election, this election has, they already know life is going to be lost. Now, that's a sad thing to discuss, but lives are going to be lost. They already know that. So everybody has to receive special uh adaptations, I guess you could say, that help them out a little bit. Some people cannot make an appearance unless they're behind the uh, plexiglass type of, uh, you know, trans, 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 it's just not going to be good. People are full of violence. They're convinced that the country is gone right now. Militias are ready to act and they won't, they're not going to accept the outcome of this election. If Trump wins, Right, he he stands a better chance. But if the Dems win, if the Democrats win, if uh, the, the, you, there's going to be some trouble in China on that. Right, so they have many different mechanisms in place to to uh, counterfeit for order in America. Right, lots of. See, somebody says, what was that? I missed it. See, the problem, people have forgotten the sting of war. They've forgotten well, what the, the aftermath of war. They have no memory of it. Uh, but they have not gone through it. Because they have not. Then that when they engage, they're going to do so uh, viciously. Those who remember this thing of war have no they have no desire to ever go back to war again when the sting of war is gone well people tend to be quite aggressive again cot's base of operations is right here at the council of time.com cot has no other outlet or venue these are other folks who will rebroadcast anything cot does is by the main page here at the council of time.com of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.